The longsword is known for being easy to pick up, but difficult to master. While its length and speed make it welcoming to newcomers, its combo tree is almost as wide as your reach. In this guide, I'll help you narrow down what you want to be doing, and teach you the hidden mechanics the game never tells you about. Knowing your best options is often what separates the hunter from the hunted. Hello hunters, I'm Pike, and welcome to my longsword guide for Monster Hunter World and Iceborne. Before we talk about the specific moves, we need to talk about the spirit gauge. Basic attacks map to your Y and B buttons fill this gauge. Spirit blade attacks map to your right trigger spend this gauge. The final attack of the spirit blade combo is called spirit round slash. If this attack connects with a monster, your spirit gauge levels up and turns white. You gain a damage boost until this color drains from the gauge. If you connect another spirit round slash before the color drains, you can level up your gauge again, turning it yellow. If you do this one more time, you can reach the final gauge level, red. The color of your gauge determines the strength of the damage boost. You gain 5% from white, 10% from yellow, and a massive 20% from red. These levels will drain to the previous level over time, or they can be spent to fuel special attacks, like Spirit Helmbreaker. Your top priority in any hunt is to get to Red Gauge before spending any gauge levels. We'll get to the special moves soon enough, but let's start with how you level up your gauge. The basic combo fills the gauge and is performed by pressing the Y button. You shouldn't use the full combo in an actual hunt, it's the slowest way to fill your gauge. However, it's still important to know this chain because you'll use parts of it in better combos. The basic combo consists of step slash, overhead slash, thrust, and rising slash. The last three attacks of this combo can loop endlessly, but don't do this. There's always something better you could be doing instead of this. You can skip to the thrust at any time by pressing B. This is an important shortcut. While Thrust deals low damage, it comes out very fast. This makes Thrust one of the best combo starters for special moves that can only be triggered after another attack. Spirit Blade attacks deal more damage than basic attacks, but cost gauge to perform. The Spirit Blade combo is performed by pressing the right trigger and consists of Spirit Blade 1, Spirit Blade 2, Spirit Blade 3, and Spirit Round Slash. It takes 75% of your gauge to perform this full combo. The Spirit Blade combo borrows two optional attacks from the basic combo. The Thrust can be used before Spirit Blade 2, and the Rising Slash can be used before Spirit Blade 3. You can use Y or B to perform these optional attacks. These attacks build gauge and can help you finish the combo even if you started without enough gauge. At any point in either combo, you can input a Fade Slash with Y plus B to move left, right, or backward while swiping the blade in front of you. If you haven't attacked yet, you can Fade Slash backward in any direction you want. Fade Slash is an incredibly valuable tool for two reasons. First, it allows you to reposition while dealing damage, and second, it lets you skip Spear Blade 1 in the Spear Blade combo while simultaneously filling your gauge. Pressing the right trigger after Fade Slash will execute a Spirit Jumping Slash, a more mobile replacement for Spirit Blade 2 that combos right into your optional attack or Spirit Blade 3. The basic combo followed by the Spirit Blade combo is too slow for hunting. To fix this, we can replace parts of our basic combo with Fade Slash and skip Spear Blade 1. We can also use the optional Rising Slash to drop another attack from the chain. The 
The amount of gauge you gain when attacking is affected by how tough the monster's hide is. If you're not attacking weak spots, you'll need to use more basic attacks. Your gauge will deplete by a manageable 5% every 6 seconds when you're not hitting the monster. Spirit Blade attacks have some unique properties. The game will never prevent you from using the first Spirit Blade attack in a chain, even if you don't have enough gauge to spend. They will even build gauge if you don't have enough. However, this comes at the cost of damage, so keep that in mind. Spirit Blade attacks also have the Mind's Eye property, meaning they cannot bounce no matter how tough the monster's hide is. This can help you secure a round slash, even when hitting an armored target. They also let you rotate much more than standard attacks. Round Slash can be tricky to master. While it levels up your gauge, it also forces you into a long sheathing animation, ending your combo. This can get you hit if you Round Slash at the wrong time. Round Slash also consumes any leftover gauge you have when it connects. Contrary to the name, Round Slash is not a full circle. Instead, it swings 270 degrees, starting from behind you, leaving a 90 degree dead zone in your back right corner. You'll need to learn how to hit targets behind you and how to keep targets out of the dead zone if you want to master this move. Foresight Slash is a powerful move that allows hunters to evade attacks and skip the entire Spirit Blade combo straight into Round Slash. You perform a Foresight Slash by pressing the right trigger plus B during the recovery animation of another attack. Foresight Slash has some limitations. It can only be used after another attack, and it consumes your entire gauge upon activation. It also requires a minimum of 10% of your gauge to work. If you have enough gauge, Foresight Slash will give your hunter a blue aura and you will hear this sound indicating your invincibility. To skip to Round Slash, you need to successfully counter an attack and connect the follow-up swing. This swing has the Mind's Eye property, so you don't need to worry about bouncing. You can tell when your counter was successful when you hear this sound. Performing the counter and landing the attack will completely fill your gauge and enable the round slash follow-up. I'm going to break down exactly what happens when you use Foresight Slash, and then talk about how to use it in a hunt. At 60 frames per second, Foresight Slash has 45 iframes and 33 counter frames. Both of these start the moment you press the buttons. Iframes are simple. The I stands for invincible, and you're completely immune to all damage and knockback for 0.75 seconds after you press the buttons. Counter frames are used to determine if you successfully countered the attack. If you get hit during a counter frame, then you gain the benefits of that counter. So, if you're attacked in the first 33 frames of Foresight Slash, or 0.55 seconds, you have successfully pulled off the counter. The benefits of Foresight Slash are getting your Spirit Gauge completely filled and the ability to combo into Round Slash if you connect the returning hit. You also gain a 30% damage multiplier on the returning hit and 1 second of Hyper Armor. Hyper Armor is the poor man's invincibility. It makes you immune to knockback and stun, but it only reduces the damage you take by 50%. You're also not immune to status effects or pin attacks. If you try to perform Foresight Slash with less than 10% of your gauge, you only get 13 iframes and no counter frames, so you cannot activate the special effects of the move. Now we're going to break down how to use it in a hunt. Foresight Slash lets you slide backwards in any direction you want, making it incredibly useful for positioning. You can practice in the training area by starting at one end and using Foresight Slash to move to the other. Remember, Foresight Slash can only be used after another attack, so use the thrust before each Foresight Slash. If you're unfamiliar with the monster, you can fish for Foresight openings by looping the thrust and rising slash. 
They're both quick attacks with long ending animations, making them great for foresight. The damage, however, is not great, so if you want to deal good damage, use Spear Blade 1 and 2 for damage, and use the optional attacks to transition to the loop. I recommend avoiding Spear Blade 3 if you're fishing. Spear Blade 3 has a long animation, and you have no optional attacks at the end, making it much more difficult to time a Foresight Slash. Since Foresight Slash is the quickest way to level up your spirit gauge, you always want to be looking for opportunities to use it. One of the best times to use it is during a monster's roar. Iframes and hyper armor make you immune to the roar's effects, and the roar itself triggers your counter. Roars can also be very predictable. Most monsters roar when you first find them, when they get mad, and when they leave an area. While Foresight Slash is powerful, don't try to Foresight everything. There are many attacks in this game that will punish you with a follow-up attack, or deny you your follow-up attack. Sometimes it's better to roll. You don't always want to use Round Slash after Foresight Slash either. It might not be safe, or you're on red and don't want to sheath. Your alternative damage options are Step Slash or Fade Slash and your more defensive options are rolling or a thrust, followed by another foresight slash. At any time, you can perform a spirit thrust with the right trigger plus Y. If you land this attack, you will launch yourself into the air before crashing down with a spirit helmbreaker. The helmbreaker is your strongest attack, but it consumes a level of your spirit gauge and only works if you have a level to spend. The thrust builds 10% of your gauge and landing the Helmbreaker gives you an autofill buff that fills your gauge for 10% every 1.5 seconds. This makes it easier to level up your gauge after you spend a level on Helmbreaker. You can even use it to Foresight Slash repeatedly. Both parts of the attack have the Mind's Eye property and cannot bounce. you only want to use Helmbreaker when you're on red gauge. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is using Helmbreaker on white or yellow. A red Helmbreaker deals over 50% more damage than a yellow Helmbreaker. Also, yellow and white Helmbreakers only get 10 seconds of the autofill buff, while red gets 15 seconds. If you use Spirit Thrust mid-combo, you have a limited angle of attack and can't thrust backwards. If you need to quickly turn around or dodge an attack before using Helmbreaker, you can use Foresight Slash to turn any direction you want and cancel the second half of Foresight Slash with Spirit Thrust. Helmbreaker can be tricky to land if you don't know the controls used to aim it. After you land the thrust, you can use the left stick to move forward, left, or right on your way up. Helmbreaker can't move backward. Once you're at the peak of your jump, you can input a new direction with the left stick and hit any attack button, the right trigger, Y, or B to turn any direction you want. This will cause you to drop slightly faster and you'll activate the attack's hitbox early. An early activation causes the damage hits to spread out from the top to the bottom of the monster. If you want all the damage hits to land towards the bottom of the monster, delay the attack button input to the last second and all the damage hits will be at the bottom. After you come down from Helmbreaker, you're going to be stuck in this pose for a while. You have three options to cancel out of this pose early. You can roll out, you can use Foresight Slash, or you can Special Sheath. As part of the Iceborne DLC, the Longsword received new moves that change how the weapon is played. The Special Sheath is an important combo extender for the Longsword. It lets you continue attacking after a Helmbreaker or even a Round Slash. Like Foresight Slash, Special Sheath can only be performed after another attack. You do this by pressing the right trigger plus A during an attack's recovery animation. You can also use Special Sheath to turn any direction you want while taking a slight step back. 
Unlike Foresight Slash, you can use Special Sheath to cancel the third hit of Spear Blade 3 and the sheathing animation of Round Slash. You can even use it to cancel out of the second half of Foresight Slash. The speed of the animation is slightly sped up by the Quick Sheath skill, however the difference is very small. You can hold the Special Sheath stance for 3.5 seconds before it ends. The stance gives you resistance to small knockbacks. While holding the stance, you can only use two moves, EI Slash or EI Spirit Slash. EI Slash is performed by pressing Y while in Special Sheath. If either of its two swings connect, you'll begin to regain 100% of your gauge over 15 seconds. The same buff is landing a Spirit Helmbreaker on Red Gauge. These two buffs can stack. Like Foresight Slash, EI Slash is also a counter. Landing the counter grants 2 seconds of Hyper Armor and doubles the duration of the Gauge Fill buff to 30 seconds. However, EI Slash only has 5 iframes and 5 counter frames, 0 0.083 seconds. Since the timing is so tight and the benefits are only okay, the Ice Slash is mostly used as a combo extender rather than a counter. The Ice Slash has Mind's Eye and cannot bounce. The Ice Spirit Slash is performed by pressing the right trigger while in Special Sheath. If it connects, it deals a lot of damage, but it costs a level of your Spirit Gauge. The damage you deal scales with your spirit gauge level. However, EI Slash isn't a normal attack because it's also a counter. It has 14 iframes and 12 counter frames on startup, 0.23 and 0.2 seconds respectively. If you counter an attack, you don't lose a level of spirit gauge. You also deal 30% more park break damage and gain 2 seconds of hyper armor. You shouldn't really use EI Spirit Slash unless you're planning to counter with it. The attack also has Mind's Eye and cannot bounce. Now when should you use Special Sheath? I'm going to split this question into two parts and cover when you want to use EI Slash and when you want to use EI Spirit Slash. If you're extending your combo after a round slash or a helmbreaker, it's only a fraction of a second slower to use EI slash than to sheath or roll cancel. For that fraction of a second, you gain the damage from EI slash and the passive fill buff, saving you a ton of time filling your gauge. You can use the fill buff to drop basic attacks from your combo, which makes EI slash fantastic for long openings where you want to regain the level you just spent on Helmbreaker. The main drawback of Special Sheath is that you're sacrificing your positioning to use it. You're locked in place and because you didn't move out of your last position, your angle of attack is much more limited. You need to consider this before committing to Special Sheath. So when do you want to use the Ice Slash? The short answer is, if it's safe and if your positioning is good, you want to use EI Slash after Helmbreaker or Round Slash. Moving on to EI Spirit Slash. Like Helmbreaker, EI Spirit Slash isn't really worth doing outside of Red Gauge. You can use it on Yellow if you can land the counter, but if you miss you lose a ton of damage going from Yellow to White. EI Spirit Slash deals less damage than Helmbreaker, so if you can't land the counter and have to choose, choose Helmbreaker. So, when do you want to use EI Spirit Slash? The short answer is, when you can land the counter, and preferably when you're on red gauge. Aerial attacks deal mounting damage and can lead to mounting the monster. Mounting is not unique to the longsword so I'll cover it in detail in another video. In this video, I'm just going to talk about aerial attacks. 
If you roll off a ledge and press Y, you perform a jumping slash. This combos into the thrust of your basic combo. If you roll off a ledge and press the right trigger, you perform a jumping spirit blade. With an unleveled gauge, this combos into spirit blade 2. With a white or yellow gauge, you perform two swings and combo into spirit blade 3. With red gauge, you perform three swings and combo into spirit blade 3. If you slide down a slope, you can launch yourself with a jumping rising slash by pressing Y. Now that you're in the air again, you can combo into either of the previous moves, the jumping slash or the jumping spirit blade. If you slide down a slope and press the right trigger, you perform an aerial draw spirit blade. This attack deals high damage and combos into round slash. All of the spirit blade attacks are great for skipping ahead in the spirit blade combo. Use them if you can. Another Iceborne addition is the Slinger Burst, which fires off your Slinger ammo like a shotgun blast. This move can be performed by pressing the left trigger after a Spirit Blade attack, Spirit Jumping Slash, or any of the aerial Spirit Blade attacks. Slinger Burst lets you turn any direction and does not interrupt the chain of your Spirit Blade combo. You can even use your optional attacks after a burst without interrupting your combo chain. The Slinger Burst is used to delay your combo and potentially flinch monsters with special ammo types. Along with Iceborne came the Clutch Claw and the Wound mechanic. There is a lot to cover about Clutch Claw, so I'll be releasing a full video about it one week after this video goes up. For now, I'll stick to the parts that are important to the Longsword. You can clutch onto the monster by aiming your slinger with the left trigger and pressing B. Once you're on the monster, you can move around with the left stick, slap the monster with B, or perform a weapon attack with Y. Slaps and weapon attacks build up soften damage and can wound a monster's hide. Wounded parts take more damage until the wound wears off in 3 minutes. It also enables the full potential of Weakness Exploit, one of the best armor skills in the game. For many endgame monsters, wounding is mandatory if you want to deal high damage. Unlike heavier weapons, the longsword has to perform the weapon attack twice to soften a monster part. This is a multi-hit attack, so in the early game it can devour your sharpness. You can mix in some slaps to compensate, the math is on the screen. As soon as you have access to the guiding lands in the post game, get your hands on the shaver decoration. This decoration lets you wound in one attack instead of two. Clutch Claw also lets you wallbang monsters for easy knockdowns. Wallbangs can also force a monster to become enraged. An enraged monster will deal more damage and move a bit faster, but they also take more damage. The boost to the damage they take is normally 10%. At the highest level of play, you want to keep monsters enraged as much as possible for that damage boost. Since most monsters roar when they become enraged, you also get a predictable foresight opening out of a wall bay. Okay, we've covered all the moves and how to use them, so let's put it together. At the start of a hunt, our top priorities are to get to red gauge, Enrage the monster, and wound a weak spot. The monster is going to roar when you find them, so we can foresight to get to white. Next, we're going to try to get to yellow, while looking for an opportunity to clutch claw. We find that opportunity and wallbang the monster. Once it's down, we can wound a weak spot and try to get another gauge level. Most of the time, we want to wound the head or the tail. While the head is normally better for damage, the tail is great because you can cut it off to weaken tail attacks and get extra rewards.
After a wall bang, the monster normally becomes enraged and roars. That's another foresight. After that, we're hopefully on red or have fully wounded a weak spot. Now we want to start looking for Helmbreaker openings. You can either find pauses in the monster's attack patterns, or you can make your own opening by knocking the monster down. The simplest way to do this is to trip the monster by hitting its legs. After Helmbreaker, we're back to yellow, and we repeat the process. The numbers in this video were pulled from the Monster Hunter World Iceborne weapon attack tables and the general data sheet. so a massive thank you to Moonbunny and Deathcream for researching and compiling that information. The links to those sheets are in the description. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. This is my first upload, and I hope to make more in the future. The Clutch Claw video is coming out a week after this one. I also plan to make a video on Longsword Gear and a Longsword Fatalis Guide. So if any of those sound interesting, consider subscribing. A like would be appreciated, and if you have any questions, comment down below.